ABNC, America's Black News Channel. Watch us on all major cable providers and major streaming platforms. Finally, news that speaks to us. Good evening, black people and all allies fighting for black liberation, black prosperity, and black joy. I'm Charles Blow, and welcome to Prime. We're in day 14 of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Ukrainian officials are accusing Russia of bombing a maternity and children's hospital in one of the country's southern cities. The Russian military also agreed to a 12-hour ceasefire with Ukraine today to allow civilians to escape the country, but millions still remain trapped in a war zone. When Russia invaded Ukraine two weeks ago, the global order shifted. The conflict holds implications for every region of the country, of the globe, including for Africa. Uh, of immediate concern are the 8,000 Moroccans and 4,000 Nigerians studying in Ukraine, where reports surfaced of Ukrainian border guards forcing African students to the back of lines as they attempted to flee the country. The president of the African Union condemned the treatment as shockingly racist and a violation of international law. But the conflict holds consequences for Africa in the long term as well. When it comes to trade, Ukraine and Russia export billions of dollars worth of goods to the region each year. In 2020 alone, both countries supplied $6.9 billion worth of agricultural goods to the region. Africa's biggest economies, Nigeria, Egypt, South Africa, Algeria, and Kenya, are major importers of Russian food commodities. If trade slows down in the coming months, experts say the conflict could exacerbate food insecurity in Africa. Countries in the Horn of Africa are particularly vulnerable since a severe drought this year hit agriculture hard and triggered spikes in food costs. Russia also holds 20 military cooperation agreements in Africa and is the single largest weapons exporter to the region. According to the UN, Russian mercenaries provided direct assistance to governments in, Lib in Libya and the Central African Republic against insurgencies. Also, Russian forces have aided in human rights abuses in the region, the UN said, though Russia denies all of this. As Putin becomes increasingly isolated, experts say he may try to bolster Russia's relationship with the countries in Africa. Kenya, however, was one of the African countries that voted to condemn Russia's invasion. The ambassador to Kenya drew on the history of colonialism to condemn the actions. Joining me now to discuss Imani Shears, associate professor at George Washington University. And joining me by phone is Clarence Hussein, professor of political science at Howard University. Uh, professor Shears, I want to start with you. I mean, I think it, it may come as a surprise to people that it's not very clear, it's much more complicated. There's an entanglement between Russia, uh, to some degree, also Ukraine, and many countries on the continent of Africa. Can you expound on what we just discussed in the intro about why those entanglements exist and to what degree they kind of hamper uh, African countries from, well, at least about half of them, from coming on board with condemning this action by Russia? Um, yes, sir, um, Mr. Blow. Thank you so much for having me on this evening. Um, it is critical. Uh, the relationship um, between Russia and African um, nations in particular is long and in-depth. And what we're seeing right now is the relationship between imperialism and colonialism. So you have African nations that are really looking at the situation in Ukraine and deciding, is this a fight we want to get into? How are we looking at the relationship between our best interests and this global truly global conflict. And we're seeing that reality is most African nations are really trying to bide their time. They're looking at the fact that with their own countries and with their own um, struggles and crises and conflicts, whether it be with inflation, whether it be with famine. In the intro, you talked about um, the, the Horn of Africa and the conflicts that are um, currently exacerbated there. You talked about Kenya. We look at countries like Nigeria, South Africa, even the Democratic Republic. Republic of Congo, and it's really a strategic move. How do these governments position themselves to make truly what can be a power play? There is clearly a humanitarian crisis occurring at the moment, but we're also talking about nations that have had humanitarian crisis, years of war and strife, and the global community have not come to their aid. So it is is truly a moment in time and a moment in history where we're seeing that these conflicts and this particular conflict with Russia and Ukraine and how it's playing on the continent and it has to be a strategic power play. Uh, Professor Lusain, 
you know, Russia is doing to some degree exactly what China has been doing, which is they see this enormous continent. Right. It has a lot of acreage, a lot of mineral resources. It has a lot of people who could be workers. And so China was, has been making incursions into in, and investments into the continent of Africa. Russia has been doing that to a lesser degree, but also doing it. Some people believe that that Putin may, in fact, turn more to, to doing that more if he becomes more isolated, but also that that may be part of the reason why some of the African countries are hesitant because they're getting not only food from Russia, they're also getting weapons from Russia. Yeah, so these are, yeah so these are really important points. So thank you for doing this, Brother Charles. So uh, Africa as a whole is facing a dilemma. As much as possible, it would like to act in unison uh, through some of the regional organizations, the African Union, uh, ECOWATS, the uh, Economic Community of West African States, through the uh, South African development community. Africa would, understands that there are strengths in numbers, but as you pointed out in the introduction, because there are very specific relations between specific countries, uh, both with Ukraine and with Russia, it makes it extremely difficult to move and coherently uh, as a whole. So what we saw with that vote was that you had a number of countries uh, who abstained. They did not want to take sides. Uh, and the, the reason for that is the long history, is, as Professor Cheers pointed out, when you go back to the colonial and the imperial er eras and the Cold War era, Africa was caught in a, in a bind because it was either the Soviet Union or United States in the West, uh, neither of which had African interests in mind. And so being aware of that history, uh, going all the way back actually to the Berlin Conference, uh, when Africa was divided up by Europe, uh, it makes it a very complicated uh, situation. And again, as, as Professor Cheers pointed out, uh, the differences in how Africans uh, were treated. Uh, this actually goes back to 2014, when the war broke out uh, initially in the East in 2014, it did not get a lot of international coverage, but African students who were studying came under attack from some of the pro-Russian militias uh, that arose in, uh, particularly in Luhas. Uh, Luhas, some were kidnapped. I was in Ukraine uh, in that period and worked with uh, some of the uh, individuals in the capital uh, to help uh, people get out of the region. Eventually, uh, Nigeria sent a train to eastern uh, Europe, uh, eastern Ukraine uh, to bring out people because it had become so dangerous. But the world paid no attention at that point because these were basically African students and no one was really kind of uh, paying attention. Uh, but this, there's a long history there that, that needs to be uh, underscored. Dr. Cheers, uh, uh you know, is Russia supporting bad government and authoritarianism in Africa as well, which kind of gives us some tentacles into the continent? I say that because we would like to say that every African country is well, well run. That's just not true. It's 54 of them. So there's some that are not. There's, there's corruption. They've, they've had experience in the last few months, just a crisis of coups. Uh, I think there have been six in the last few months. So there, there is a, an issue there. And Russia, according to the UN, has been sending mercenaries into some of these countries and also committing human rights violations in others. Are they kind of meddling, you know, in the way that they meddled in politics over here just by on social media, but meddling on the ground with actual soldiers in, in Africa and making a mess of it and also therefore making more of an entanglement out of it and making it more difficult for these these African countries to, to take a stand on this issue just on the merits. Absolutely, Mr. Blow. I mean, the reality is that Vladimir Putin is a opportunist. He is going to find any way that he can get his tentacles into any situation and cause chaos, right? And that's what we see him doing and have been doing throughout his reign as president or prime minister of Russia. That is his move. How can we sow dissension so that then we can capitalize off of the chaos? And he's continuing to do that. So that is going to just continue the way in which, and you can also look at some of his allies, right? Look at the power move 
that China has done on the African continent in the last 15 to 20 years. And we're seeing that that is all obviously very, very, very strategic. And as we're coming together, we're realizing that it is going to be in the benefit of Russia and China to continue to sow dissension, to continue to prop up mercenaries, to continue to um, cause chaos um, and fund chaos in a way that is going to destabilize regions, destabilize countries, so that when you have a power move, as he did on February, uh, Vladimir Putin did on February 24th, where he launched his attacks into Ukraine, that he's going to continue to do that throughout the rest of this war. We don't know what's going to happen, but it is incredibly strategic. These notions that Putin is, quote unquote, a lunatic, or these things seem completely um, sporadic. They are not. They are power moves that he has been planning for a long time. And sowing this dissension on the African continent, mm -hmm. as well as what he's done in the Middle East and in North Africa, he's going to continue to do to continue to destabilize countries that he feels are going to potentially be allies as he tries to destabilize the West. When it comes to some of these African countries and Russia, Ukraine, it's complicated. Dr. Imani Cheers and Dr. Lar uh, Clarence Lusain, thank you both for joining me tonight.